Today we look at the classic 1983 Star Trek kit on What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Tonight we got a very special episode of What's in the Box. This is a very out of production, very vintage Star Trek kit. It's still sealed. And I'm going to open this for all of us to look at. Now this is one of my personal favorite Star Trek kits. This one is a reissue, of course, back in the 70s of that kit. Uh, it's not current though. This one is actually from 1983. But it's from the same molds as a vintage 1973 Star Trek kit. And the reason why I like this kit this is one that actually got me inspired to build Star Trek model kits. Because as you can see here, you know, you got pictures of Kirk and Spock and the ship. And there is a special message that says that you can build the entire fleet. Special decal included contains name and num names and numbers of starships. Build the entire fleet. So this kit I've been collecting throughout the years. There it gives a bunch of history here. I've been collecting these ones throughout the years and trying to build all of those original kits, the uh, sister ships to the Enterprise. Now this kit, of course, is similar inside to the current AMT releases, like the Tholian web ship. It's actually the same kit except for a few details. And we'll be looking at these kits in future what's in the boxes, but as for now, we're going to open this one up, so let's go down to our table and check out what a 1970s, early 80s vintage Star Trek model kit looked like. All right, vintage beauty. Okay, so this was a kit that inspired a part of my childhood here. Now I just want to read to authenticate how old this is. To boldly go where no man has gone before. This now famous phrase captured the imagination of millions when Star Trek first aired on network television in 1966. Since then, Star Trek has had an ever-increasing number of followers. Even after the final episode in September of 1969, the number of Star Trek fans continued to grow. Now we're looking at it's past the 50th year of Star Trek. In December 1979, backed by tremendous fan support, Paramount Pictures released Star Trek, the motion picture, followed by Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, which released in, 1980, in June 1982. Now with the advent of the third picture, Star Trek III, which came out in 1984, uh, a whole new generation of Star Trek followers has emerged with the continued enthusiasm in the Star Trek legacy, Ertl AMT, which is now AMT Round 2, is proud to release the Star Trek kit that lets you relive past episodes or create your own new adventures. Special decals. Build the entire fleet. Okay, here we go. Now this has been shrink-wrapped for decades. Almost doesn't feel right to cut the wrapping on this, but anyway, well, for science. <laughs> See, look, even back in, in that time they had the barcode. Eh? I think barcodes were first invented in the late 70s. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. This thing has not had air inside it, fresh air, since 83. <laughs> and here we go. Molded in the beautiful gray plastic. We have our Star Trek Starship Enterprise kit, which is going to be heck to see on this backdrop. And now here to start off are the very famous instruction sheets of the era. Ooh, a nice tough crease being folded for all that time. Okay. Model kit number 6676. This is the first one with the four numbers. The early ones have a letter S there and the number is different. But this is not that vintage of a kit. 
Oh, these instructions are even a bit different than some of the ones I have. Okay, there you go. It tells you how to put the saucer together and the primary hull and then there's all your engines and things going together and then how it goes on the stand. But this was one of the things I thought was kind of cool. The USS Enterprise, as it was seen on your old Earth television series called Star Trek, is a heavy cruiser class starship. The Enterprise is one of 14 ships of this class which currently comprise the United Federation of Planets' primary peacekeeping force. This model kit is a reproduction of the Enterprise and is an approved model in concordance with Starfleet Command regulations and is intended for uh, display only. Because of obvious security reasons, certain materials and information must necessarily be withheld. However, to promote better relations between our two time periods, we have made some information available which we hope will enhance your knowledge and enjoyment as you build your model. <laughs> Should I read all this? Sure. The Heavy Cruiser is a deep space starship. Although it is primarily a military vehicle, it is also an instrument of scientific research and diplomacy in the service of the Federation. The standard ship complement numbers 430, of which 40 hold officer ranks. Under normal conditions, there are permanent stateroom accommodations for 500. However, lounges and cargo holds can be easily converted into staterooms whenever the need arises. A typical day for a crew member begins one hour before duty call. Everyone is expected to show up for duty watch, duty watch clean and well fed. Because a starship is never at rest, there is one, a one half hour overlap between ships. A standard watch lasts eight hours after which each individual is free to pursue their own interests. When a yellow alert is sounded, all stations are manned by the duty watch and the previous watch must report to the duty stations to act as back battle stations. Should either the primary or secondary hull of a heavy cruiser become too severely damaged to maintain life support systems, the other has the full capacity to operate independently as an emergency lifeboat and can effectively house an entire ship's complement. Both inorganic and organic materials can be recycled and fabricated on board to avoid costly delays at star bases. Shore leave is routinely scheduled every 90 days, but even when a starship is at dock, only one watch is permitted off ship at a given time. Okay, if you wish to add the, to the realism of this kit, we recommend that major sub-assemblies be completed and painted prior to final assembly. This will allow for less cumbersome handling as detailed painting is done. Avoid using excess bonding agents or paints when using sprays. The parts are arranged on trees and can be easily removed using a sharp knife. If gaps occur between large pieces such as the saucers, they can be adequately filled with any good modeler's putty available in your time period. <laughs> Uh, 2017. Okay, use only painted and bonding agents specifically designed for the for use on styrene plastic. And the final little bit here. We recommend painting the sub-assemblies gloss white or light blue and then dusting these parts with a very light spray of silver. After this is thoroughly dried, detail can be added using a fine artist brush. Some paints may need to be thinned for proper application. The paint and decal charts applied should aid you in your selection of colors to be used. Huh. Okay. And here are the pictures of the ship showing your painting uh, colors where it would go. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Barry's going to be interested in this one. Uh, here's the underside of the starship. And look here. Are you a collector? Join the Erdl Replica Club. Now, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is interesting is because in later instruction sheets right here are the Franz Joseph numbering system for each of the decals on the ship as to which number correlates with which ship. On here it doesn't have it. So I've never seen instructions like this actually. Like the majority yes, but not without that. So without further ado, Next, we will look at our decal sheet. And this decal sheet has been with like all the, the future releases from that time period. But as you can see, 
you've got NCC 1701, which would be your Enterprise, going all the way up to number 14. Uh, now, if you are more uh, of a current Star Trek fan, you will know the Greg Jean numbering system is completely different from this. Uh, however, AMT sort of in this era had their own sort of system. I guess ships number 1 to 14 would just be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I don't know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, going along that format. There wasn't really anything said on this until slightly later. Okay, next we will look at the plastic of this kit, which should be quite familiar to anybody who has built this kit before. However, for those of you who are new, let's open up this vintage bag, which actually has a, a double folded seam right here. <laughs> it must have slipped at the time on the on the packing machine or something. Okay. This is some pretty pretty tough bag back there. Like, what's your bag, baby? Anyway. <laughs> okay. All these nice little goodies. And a uh, little part that wasn't in the bag, which I'll just show quickly here, are the upper and lower saucer domes. The bottom one has a little bump. The top one is smooth. Okay, so put that back in the box. So, where to begin with this? Well, it could be quite the thing to try to look at, so just a sec here. What's well, cheap? Okay. Oh, here. Let's do this. There's your one half of a warp drive engine and your impulse engines and the intercoolers. These would go into there. You can notice some flash. This you'll have to remove with your hobby knife. The intercooler. And this is the outer side of one of the warp engines. And here you can't really see it, but there's four windows. That go down there. Now uh, this kit has some inaccuracies, uh, many inaccuracies, as opposed to the real Starship Enterprise on TV. Uh, this was kind of coming from an era in the 60s where they figured if it looked close enough it was good enough. Uh, to those people that really enjoy their accuracy you might want to look at the Polar Lights kits but uh, for what this is, the only large size Enterprise, original Enterprise of this type of era, I love this kit. It's good. It's fun to build. Here's a, another engine. And this one has the intercoolers that go up along the top, the warp engine, as well as this is one of the pieces underneath here for your engine, what do they call them, Bus bussards? And there's the secondary hull in two pieces. This has the improved version. The earlier version had just a hole there. And then there was a ring that went inside. And the warp engines actually had a notch right there. And they hooked into the ring, which was a really bad design at the time. This is the improved version. So they actually can lock into those square boxes. Uh, then we get into the stand and the shuttle bay doors, which are a nice detail. But like I said, I mean, you got to build this kit uh, just as a, a representation of what the Enterprise looks like, and not as a true Enterprise. But that's the fun of this kit, is in accurizing the parts. Uh, like, for instance, on the ends of the warp engines, these little balls are like little bumps, but if you look at the real Star Trek ship, they come way out. So a lot of guys will either cut these off, smooth this out, 
make like the first pilot with some styrene and uh, put the line in the bar there or they'll try to drill all the little holes into the end caps I mean it's a lot of fun to to just mess around with this thing and uh, you'll note here these rings are actually supposed to be different sizes inside not perfectly uh, symmetrical and they're supposed to stand out except on here they just go dead flat to the disc the uh, there's your sensor dish but it doesn't have all the little rings and stuff like on the TV series and it just glue, will glue in there and there's the bottom of the saucer section and you notice these three divots that are in here those are not on the actual production model these are their own AMT's unique own thing um, some people suggest that maybe this is where the photon torpedoes blast out but <laughs> there's no real explanation I have heard that these dots were used in the mold process to try to get this thing out of the mold but I don't know if that's confirmed either and last but not least there's the top of the saucer and as you'll notice this has raised grid lines which um, somebody had added into this for whatever reason they're not really supposed to be there on the production model but there is one major benefit to these things that I have always appreciated is when you have your decal sheet you notice how this is all flat this will actually give you a centerline reference point for when you put your USS Enterprise on there or whichever ship you're going to build going flat across and then with each of these little lines you can line your numbers up and move them you have to cut these all apart of course but you can line them up and have them go around so you got your NCC 1701 and now when the grid lines are removed it's hard to line this up you know accurately without the grid lines however I like the grid lines other people don't <laughs> uh, there's a, a little funny flaw on here if you notice this is the the uh, turbo lift elevator it does not actually attach at all to the ring of the bridge so um, yeah you you would have Kirk and them go up the turbo lift elevator and not be able to get out and go onto the bridge. It's just one of those weird flaws that this model kit has. Uh, and there's another thing here. This is a mold releasing flaw that not many people catch on to. You see this intercooler here at the back. Let's just get this up here. This square intercooler at the back, if you look at it, let's see. From that angle you'll see that it's got a wedge here this is not actually how it should be on the actual ship the reason why they have this is when this thing is in the plastic mold getting injected it's injected like this sitting downward if this was perfectly square they could not get this out of the mold so they put this thing this is called a relief they put that relief on there so when you pull it out of the mold it can come out without getting jammed inside the mold. Now if you notice on the opposite side of this when you put the engine together you've got your relief that's kinda hard to do without an extra 20 hands in here right now. Okay you got one relief and the angle is going down this way and if you look at this relief it's going up this way so you got this funny twist on the reliefs going on there so what you need to do when you build this kit is to carefully take a hobby saw and cut straight down on the relief and then with your file file the, the curve off and make it square to the top of the relief it's a trick and I'm going to show that to you because what I want to do is build this model with you guys 
in uh, my other series called Let's Build It. Okay, but for now, this is the review of the AMT Vintage 6676 kit of the Starship Enterprise. Well, we hope you enjoyed this unboxing of Star Trek kit number 6676. And if you would like to see me open up the 1993 edition of this kit, please click here. If you'd like to see me open up the Romulan Bird of Prey, click down here. If you want to see an old style Klingon D7 cruiser from the original series, click here. And don't forget to subscribe to us right down here. And you can visit our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. We hope to see you in the next review. Have a good one.